Hi everyone, it's Bob Vandy with National Long-Term Care Brokers. Welcome to this edition of On Demand Training. In this session, entitled Changing Solutions for a Changing Long-Term Care Planning World, we'll give you a brief overview of some of the old and some of the new as it relates to some of the product solutions that are now available in the marketplace to help your clients and prospects plan for the eventuality of long-term care. The long-term care planning risk is one that can no longer be ignored by your clients and prospects. We're living longer, and with that longer life comes the increased likelihood of needing care. At the same time, the cost of providing long-term care is increasing at a rate higher than that of normal inflation. The net effect of that is that many of your clients and prospects' retirement portfolios are at a bigger risk than ever before. We know that long-term care insurance may be able to pay for a full range of long-term care services, whether it be in a nursing home setting or more likely in a home care or assisted living setting. The key as insurance and financial professionals is to present solutions to your clients, everything from self-insuring the risk to traditional or standalone long-term care insurance, as well as some of the newer options we'll discuss in this program. One of the recurrent themes that you'll hear in a lot of the training that we do here at National Long-Term Care Brokers, including during this session, is that a lot has changed in the long-term care planning and the long-term care insurance markets. The market has indeed changed, as have the products. It's important that we remember and that we pass along to our clients and prospects, however, that one of the main things that has not changed and is not likely to change anytime soon is the need, the need to plan in advance for the potential risk of long-term care later in life. We've seen a number of changes in the traditional or standalone long-term care insurance marketplace in recent years. We've seen premiums increase, both on a new business basis as well as on enforced blocks. We've also seen some carriers decide to get out of the business of writing long-term care insurance altogether. And while there are a number of reasons that have contributed to these changes, the two biggest drivers have been the prolonged low interest rate environment and a higher than anticipated persistency rate, meaning the percentage of people who decide to keep their policies over time. That has resulted in higher than expected claims for the carriers. Those two factors have had really two effects, a tremendous upward pressure on premiums and compromised profitability for the carriers. At the same time, we've seen some consumer behavior changes. Affordability has become an even more sensitive issue, perhaps because of the increased premium environment. That's had a bigger impact even during retirement than before retirement. We've seen carriers tighten their eligibility requirements for underwriting. We've seen consumers have more of a desire than ever for guarantees in their premium levels. We've seen consumers express some use it or lose it concerns. In other words, what happens if I never use my long-term care insurance policy for long-term care? Finally, we just haven't hit our stride yet in the market as it relates to the market penetration for traditional long-term care insurance. We've seen a number of new products introduced to help your clients plan for the risk of long-term care. Many of these products are commonly referred to as linked benefit, sometimes asset-based products. They can take the form of either life insurance products or in about 30 or so states, annuity products that have riders, either referred to as long-term care riders or sometimes chronic illness riders. Typically these products, on the life insurance side is where we'll focus our discussion, the premiums are typically paid on a single premium basis or on an ongoing premium basis. And they're really contrasted by two forms of product. Number one, the true linked benefit products where the client typically puts one premium into the policy and gets a multiple of that amount of premium as both a death benefit and then a long-term care benefit. Or on the ongoing premium products, again, typically life insurance products, the client has a death benefit that can be accelerated or used early to pay for long-term care or chronic illness. The way the benefits are paid on these policies vary as well. They can either be paid on a reimbursement basis where the client pays for care and is reimbursed based on the language of the policy or rider, or they're paid on an indemnity basis, which means that the amount of stated benefit is typically paid, as long as they're receiving covered care, without regard to what they actually pay out of pocket. 
you'll find some similarities across the product spectrum when it comes to identifying your ideal prospect for long-term care products. However, when it comes to link benefits, there are some uniquenesses you should be aware of. First, the average prospect for a link benefit product is likely at or near, in fact, sometimes even in, retirement. In fact, the issue age for these products typically hovers around 63 or 64. You contrast that with a traditional long-term care insurance product, which has an average issue age at this time of about 57. Next, it's likely that your prospect has some invested assets, safe or rainy day money set aside, and they may not verbalize it this way, but they're likely thinking of self-insuring the risk of long-term care with those invested assets. They may be concerned about the possibility of paying premiums for a long-term care product and never getting money back because they never need the benefits from the long-term care product. They may also be worried about the potential for a rate increase on their existing long-term care policy later on. They also value control over their assets. If they're going to asset reallocate money from one pocket to another, they like the idea that they can retain control. Many of the link benefit products allow them to do that better than any other product out there. They may also not see themselves as needing care. Now we know statistically that's not likely, but you'll have a hard time convincing them otherwise. And then finally, they may already have said no to traditional long-term care insurance. However, it's important to point out that we recognize that the insurance company cannot have said no to them. It's a common misconception that if somebody has been declined for traditional long-term care insurance, you can automatically bring them over to a link benefit product and they'll qualify. Often that's not the case. There's a logical question you may be asking yourself at this point, and that is, okay, Bob, so which product is the best one for me to recommend to my client or prospect? And there's a major thought we want you to take away from the session today, and that is, it depends. There are pros and cons to each particular product, and we're going to take a look at those shortly. But we want you to walk away with a very objective view that there is no one product that is better or worse than the other. The objective is to find the one that's the best fit for your client or prospect. Let's take a look at some of those pros and cons of the various products, and we'll start with traditional or standalone long-term care insurance. We have to recognize that your client or prospect can get the most comprehensive set of benefits and riders with a traditional long-term care insurance product. That consists of things like more plentiful inflation options, the ability to get shared care in some policies where one spouse can borrow benefits from another, the availability of discounts and what have you. Next, we have to recognize that traditional long-term care insurance may likely be eligible for higher tax incentives than the linked benefit product brethren. And that's both at the federal or depending on the client's state of resident, possibly at the state level as well. We also have to recognize that traditional long-term care insurance is the only product that currently has partnership asset protection available to it. And we now have partnership long-term care plans available in over 40 states. The other side of the coin, however, is that we have to recognize that traditional long-term care insurance is indeed susceptible to potential rate changes. And then finally, as we mentioned previously, underwriting for long-term care insurance has gotten more stringent, so we have to determine whether your client can qualify for a traditional or standalone product. On the link benefit side of the coin, there are a couple of main benefits that clients most often allude to that they like. First, because of the nature of linked benefits, that is that they have a benefit available for long-term care, they have a death benefit available with the life insurance products that assures an income tax-free death benefit to heirs, or some of the products, as we mentioned earlier, have a return of premium benefit that allows the client to walk away five or 10 years hence, for example, they like the ability that that means that no matter what happens, they will get something back from the policy. In addition, if the client is ultra sensitive to the possibility of a rate increase on their traditional long-term care product, the link benefit products often mitigate that concern. As to the ability to more easily qualify for link benefits, we have to tread lightly there. As I alluded to earlier, there is a misconception in the marketplace that if a client can't qualify for a traditional long-term care product, they may be able to qualify for a link benefit product. And while that may be true, we don't want to leave you with the impression that everybody can qualify. That's simply not the case. One of the other advantages with the link benefit products as you do, is that you do have the ability for third-party ownership. 
So if your client is doing some estate or legacy planning in addition to their long-term care planning, they can have their policy owned, for example, by an irrevocable trust. That can make for some great flexibility. The cons on the other side of the coin are that you may have some more limited tax incentives with your link benefit products. While there are some carriers who have indicated they feel that their products are eligible for long-term care incentives, it seems that the jury is still out on some of those. And then finally, we need to recognize that some of the link benefit products have riders that fall under the true long-term care category, and some of the riders fall under chronic illness. And there are some subtle but important differences between the two that you and your client will want to be aware of. To help you and your client or prospect determine which product or products might be the most suitable for their situation, here are some questions that you and they might consider. The first two are somewhat related. If your client or prospect has already taken a look at traditional or standalone long-term care insurance and decided against it, they may be a good link benefit prospect. On the other hand, if they've looked at traditional long-term care insurance and the carrier has declined to offer them coverage, they'll be hard-pressed to find long-term care coverage through a link benefit product. It's important to get a feel for how likely they feel a long-term care event could be for them. If they don't feel that's a very likely event, they'll be more resistant to a traditional product and a link benefit product may be more suitable. By the same token, when it comes to self-insuring, those clients that have assets set aside to pay for care if they need it, there are two questions that you and they may want to ask. That is, do they prefer to self-insure? In other words, does it make more sense to shift the risk to an insurance carrier? And equally important, can they self-insure? Sometimes people have some assets set aside, but given the cost of care, fifty, seventy-five, dollars $100,000 may not go very far against self-insuring the risk later on. If they tend to be worried about long-term care insurance rate increases down the road, then maybe a link benefit product makes more sense for them. When it comes to their age, because of the insurability risk that we've talked about, it gets harder to get long-term care insurance later on down the road. So the younger they are, the more of a candidate they may be for traditional long-term care insurance. And with owning a business, because of the tax incentives that are present, they are available for traditional long-term care insurance, but may not be available for the link benefit products. So that's worth consideration for a business owner. As we wrap up this brief presentation, the main thing that we want you to take away from our time together is that there is not one best solution for every client situation that you're going to encounter. There are different situations, different preferences, and thus different products that will fit best. Approach it with an open mind and make sure you're asking your prospects the right questions. We've tried to provide you with some of the rationale, some of the pros and cons, as well as some of those questions you might ask during this brief presentation today. Ultimately, the question that you want to ask yourself and that you want to ask your client or prospect is what's the alternative? Because the worst thing that can happen is that you go through the consultative process of planning for long-term care with your client and they do nothing at all. So keep that open mind and make sure you put the right product in the right place for the right client at the right time. Thanks once again for sitting in on our brief presentation today on changing solutions for a changing long-term care planning world. We recognize that the presentation today may have raised some additional questions. So on the screen, you'll find the phone number to call for our support staff here at National Long-Term Care Brokers, where you can follow up with them and get any remaining questions answered. Don't hesitate to reach out to us for client consultations as well. Not only can we talk directly with you, but we can also talk directly with you and your client or prospect, so lean on us for the support you need. As always, thanks so much for sitting in on this on-demand training session, and good selling.